Uh, I would like to, to give you contribution to discussion how to make a good uh, data management plan or even uh, how to manage a good data management plan. Uh, I will clarify it later on why uh, we should think about data management plan as a, as a continuous process. Uh, we are working all uh, under umbrella of uh, Svalbard Integrated Arctic Earth Observing System, uh, but SIOS uh, uh, has a bright uh, history, uh, which has strong influence on how we should manage data. And uh, I would like to, to uh, recall this history. Uh, so SIOS started in 2008 uh, as uh, S3 roadmap infrastructure. Uh, then SIOS uh, got uh, funding from EU FP7 and uh, it was preparatory phase of the SIOS project ended in 2014. Then uh, effort was taken by Research Council of Norway and uh, also was funding by in-kind contribution of partners uh, or sustaining uh, by in-kind contribution of partners till 2018. Then SIOS has his uh, operational phase. And uh, SIOS in his policy aims to support such uh, initiatives as JBIF, uh, CIOS, uh, is ICSU World Data Systems uh, and uh, WMO. So there are plenty of organizations SIOS is uh, trying to take the best from them. Uh, which of course has influence how SIOS uh, uh, is approaching to uh, data management issues. Some general problems with uh, data accessibility uh, addressed long time ago. Uh, I think uh, I have seen this uh, inventory first time uh, somewhere in 2008 maybe. But uh, in my opinion, is uh, still valid. Uh, even some uh, issues are uh, stronger now. So first of all, is how to discover data. Uh, discovery of data is a problem uh, with uh, data management because uh, it's not so easy to find uh, data somewhere in the in the world. Uh, maybe it's much. Uh, it's a bit easier for scientists, but it's very hard to to, to discover data for people outside the community. Uh, the, another problem is how to access data, because uh, there are some policy issues, some data, data are classified uh, or treated like classified without reason. And uh, uh, very often uh, we have conflict of interest uh, because uh, scientists who are data originator are trying to uh, exploit some added value themselves to data because uh, they have to uh, publish. Uh, and uh, his uh, day value is, is uh, counted uh, from number of publications and uh, publications are produced using data. So this keep data unveiled. Another problem is how to use data. Uh, very often data are restricted to research use and uh, it's very hard to use data for another purposes, for example, commercial projects. It's maybe not a big, huge problem for us because all of us are scientists, but uh, for uh, founders it's a problem because uh, when data is paid uh, once, uh, everybody should access this data. Uh, so we have cost of data. Uh, sometimes some organizations are trying to, to, to uh, calculate cost of data sharing uh, in a ridiculous way. Uh, normally it should be just a cost of a couple of minutes and cost of the, the uh, tra data transfer uh, activity, not the sharing of, of total data uh, of to to total data acquisition cost. Another problem is uh, from domain uh, specific uh, nature. It's a coherence of data. Data is uh, very hard to share between domains uh, due to, uh, let's say, dysfunctional attitude uh, to data harmonization presented by some uh, data originators and uh, data sharing concepts, let, let, let's say in this way. 
and uh, quantity of data also is problematic because distribution of measurements in most scales is not homogeneous. So we have some areas where uh, data is not covered uh, properly and uh, there are some areas where, where measurements overlap and uh, multiple organizations, many scientists are doing the same activities uh, with data acquisition. And another problem is with quality of data, because if data is not uh, associated with uh, metadata, uh, the data is useless. So no one else is able to, to use just numbers. Uh, data has to be associated uh, with uh, metadata. So another problem, data interoperability. Uh, we are used to work in a, a heterogeneous uh, environment. Uh, we are working with uh, different uh, teams. Uh, we are cooperating with different organizations and uh, uh, quite often uh, some interoperability issues are uh, stopping uh, with uh, data uh, management activities. So what is the data interoperability? In general, interoperability is the ability of two or more systems to communicate and interact or be used together uh, despite uh, their differences. And uh, why we should uh, assure interoperability? Uh, because we have to facilitate uh, exchange and sharing of information, at least. And uh, also, uh, we are all struggling for rising availability, uh, access and integration of different data collections, uh, data collections coming from past or data collections uh, uh, acquired uh, parallelly uh, nowadays by different organizations. And also, uh, interoperability allows us to facilitate understanding and usage of data. and. Uh, interoperability solves heterogeneity. Uh, so differences in uh, data uh, in general. And how we can uh, assure interoperability? Using uh, standards, uh, standards for data, metadata services, so many different standards in many diff different uh, uh, procedures, uh, activities with data management. Uh, we also uh, provide uh, semantic interoperability, so we should use uh, common ontology, uh, we should use uh, controlled vocabularies for uh, data management. And uh, when we are talking about data interoperability, we can distinguish different abstraction layers of uh, data interoperability. So we can uh, talk about uh, cooperation of data centers. So we have to, to, to investigate as, as uh, data center managers, uh, how to uh, merge our data collections and how to provide to uh, users of data centers, uh, heterogeneous uh, aggregated data collections, uh, which are useful. Uh, so we have to solve problem with data policy enforcement because different data centers and different organizations use uh, different data policies. It's, uh, the problem is less and less because uh, all of uh, data originators are trying to, to, to deploy uh, open access to data and it makes uh, it simplifies uh, way how to enforce data policy, but still problems occurs. And deployment of standards. Uh, if we use standards and uh, we have common sense how to operate, uh, how to manage our data and, and how to uh, provide this data, uh, it's much easier to create aggregated data collections. Uh, also, development of controlled vocabularies and development of transmission protocols, which are the same for uh, more or less the same for, for uh, all data users and data providers. Uh, unification of data models, uh, which is also very important uh, because it uh, allows to, to, to build uh, uh, more complex uh, products and uh, we have to preserve common sense of data life uh, cycle uh, plans. 
and heterogeneity uh, also could be investigated on different uh, level of abstraction uh, so we can uh, uh, talk about heterogeneity uh, on system level so it's interaction between computers on different uh, databases different database management systems uh, we can talk about uh, heterogeneity at a different uh, uh, level uh, uh, at level of syntactic uh, so we have differences between formats uh, such as gml or shapefile shapefile is a very popular format but is uh, closed by uh, esri GML is open format. Uh, we can talk about uh, heterogeneity on schematic level. So we have different conceptual schemas. We have, uh, 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 for instance, uh, sampling could be defined as a class uh, of uh, method, or we can uh, define it uh, as attribute of measurement. Uh, we are, we are, when we are doing measurement, we have to do something. And uh, we also can talk about heterogeneity on semantic level. Uh, for some people, temperature is a one word, but uh, for some scientists, it will be uh, sea surface temperature. For others, uh, atmospheric researchers, it will be air temperature. Uh, also, when we talk about coastline versus shoreline, uh, when we approach from different directions, uh, we use different uh, different descriptions of this uh, phenomenon. And how to uh, convey from heterogeneity to uh, interoperability. On semantic level, uh, we have to use uh, community-specific vocabularies and concepts. Uh, same ontologies and we have to share concepts uh, across the, the community. On schema level, uh, we can use uh, or develop specific markup language, domain specific markup languages, and we can uh, develop uh, common data schemas and uh, community profiles for uh, uh, data structures. At syntax level, we can uh, use uh, standard file formats like NetCDF, uh, Shapefile, uh, DXF. Uh, we can use uh, the same languages like SQL, XML, GML, uh, and others. And system level, we can uh, use uh, standard transfer protocols and uh, well-documented uh, services like WXS. So, data management plan. Uh, the concept uh, has origination in the 60s uh, and uh, advanced engineering projects uh, and aeronautic uh, space uh, uh, exploration projects uh, were used uh, DMP for data collection and analysis, just to organize these processes. Uh, for scientific community, uh, maybe it was uh, first defined in 1995, but uh, Economic and Social Research Council, and finally it, it has uh, provided UK Data Service, uh, the flagship of, of this uh, uh, of this organization. Uh, so uh, ECRS uh, ESRC has uh, found that. Uh, has uh, developed policy that uh, found that research should be openly available to scientific community to the maximum extent possible through long-term preservation and high quality of data management. Uh, later, uh, this concept is well, was not developed uh, well, even if uh, framework, framework Program 7, uh, it was just mentioned that all files and documents have to be kept uh, for up to five years after the end of the project for auditing purposes. And it was kind of preservation of data and uh, it was no clear statement on data sharing, but uh, about publications. So open access to publications was strongly promoted by FP7. And finally, in Horizon 2020, it was the clear and strong requirement for data management plan. And it was, uh, was not obligatory, but, but uh, was required to, to, good, uh, to, to have a good rank of, of proposals. So uh, you can see that uh, Horizon 2020 has uh, open research data pilot uh, project. Uh, 
which result was uh, requirement to develop data management plan. And at the bottom of the, of the slide, you can see definition that data management plan uh, is something that participating projects uh, are required to develop and uh, data management plan should specify what data will be open, uh, what data will be generated by project, uh, how this data will be exploited, uh, how it will be accessible for verification and reuse and how it will be curated and preserved. So it was uh, quite uh, simple, but a very effective, uh, let's say, minimum structure for data management plan. What about data lifecycle? Because data is not coming from nothing and, and is not voiding uh, somewhere in at a real, uh, so we have to, to imagine how we can uh, manage this data. Uh, first of all, we have to conceptualize what kind of data uh, we have to create within the project frame or we have to uh, discover somewhere else uh, already collected, already available. Then uh, we are entering the circle, uh, which is uh, which we are spinning across the circle and uh, around the circle, not across around the circle. Uh, when we define the data, we have to select uh, from data sources or, or select our imagination about uh, data uh, available, and then we have to ingest the data. Then uh, perform preservation action, uh, prepare data for reuse uh, and reuse. Uh, maybe we are doing some transformation of data and this process is continuous. So we can curate, it, it, we can curate data. Uh, so these processes are data curation uh, uh, cycle. And finally, some of data has to be disposed for some reasons, uh, but uh, some data are, uh, rounding this circle uh, eternally. What about data fairness? In, 20, uh, in 2016, a group of authors has published the fair guiding pr principles for scientific data management and data stewardship. So it was formalized uh, uh, set of requirements for uh, good uh, practices for data uh, management. This article is available. Uh, please find it uh, in, uh, in the bottom of screen, of screen uh, the URL of this article. And FAIR is acronym for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So data, if has to be findable, has to be, uh, has, has to be associated with globally unique and persistent identifier. So if we collect data object, we are using uh, persistent identifier to mark this data and to make, to identify this data uh, collection. Uh, DOI is kind of such persistent and globally unique uh, pers uh, identifier, but also we can use UID uh, which is also uh, uh, persistent. Uh, persistent is our business. Uh, so we have to assure that it will be persistent, but it's globally unique. If we have a unique identifier for data collections, it's easy to distinguish this particular data set from others uh, available in the world. So uh, another uh, issue is uh, uh, metadata. Data has to be described by rich uh, metadata, which uh, tell a user uh, who originated data, how, use they, how to use this data, what is the geospatial and temporal uh, resolution and uh, location of this data, which parameters uh, uh, compound data collection, and uh, what about methods uh, of data collection, uh, how data has been processed, etc. A lot of information you can attach uh, using metadata. Uh, there are some minimal sets uh, which uh, allows to, to find data somewhere in the space. And uh, metadata uh, should clearly and explicitly include this identifier mentioned in uh, at the beginning uh, and uh, data metadata should be registered or indexed somewhere in searchable uh, resource so some data centers should uh, 
have at least uh, metadata records and uh, provide information about uh, data collected somewhere with uh, methodology how to access this data and policy how data could be accessed. Data to be accessible uh, has to use standardized communication protocols, uh, has to be open, free, uh, implementable, and uh, protocol should allow for authentication and authorization procedure for uh, to use this data. And uh, metadata uh, should be accessible. It's very important, even with uh, data is no longer available because it gives information that some data has been collected, maybe some data has been published, has been used for publication and information and knowledge taken from this data uh, could be also uh, retrieved from some resources. If data has to be interoperable, have to use uh, formal, accessible, shared and broadly applicable language, uh, should resist uh, technological development, uh, data should use vocabularies uh, that also follow our principles and uh, data should include uh, qualified reference to other data or metadata if it is complex data collection and to reuse data uh, should data should be uh, associated with uh, clear and accessible uh, usage license and data uh, should be associated with uh, detailed provenance uh, and uh, data should meet domain relevant community uh, standards. Some examples of metadata, the minimal set of, of metadata uh, information uh, is a Dublin core, in my opinion. Uh, so it gives information about uh, who contribute data, what is the coverage, uh, what is the uh, creator of data, uh, temporal uh, location, uh, description about data collection, uh, information about format, uh, identifier of data collection, uh, information about language, publisher, uh, uh, policy, etc. But also we can use more complex uh, and more informative uh, metadata standards, uh, for example, uh, INSPIRE, which derives from ISO 19115. Uh, it, this uh, format is more complex, uh, is multidimensional, but also is more informative. And if we use this uh, metadata format, it's very easy to maintain this metadata format with GeoNetwork. Uh, which is very useful for some reasons uh, to share data with other data centers, uh, institutions, etc. Because it's a very popular, popular standard. What about licensing? Uh, I think everybody has uh, heard about Creative Commons. Uh, usually uh, attribution uh, part of Creative Commons is uh, this uh, license which is used most, the most for, for uh, data sharing. So attribution uh, allow to copy, distribute, display, perform, perform the work and make derivative from this uh, uh, data collection uh, or works based on, on this license uh, and give the uh, credits of the author or, or licensor uh, in the specified manner. Uh, SIOS also has data policy. This data policy is, uh, derives uh, directly from this uh, uh, political context I have quoted uh, at the beginning of my presentation. And uh, most of this uh, uh, data policy uh, uh, go, uh, originate from uh, EU inspired directive, but also from global earth observing system of systems. And uh, there are four uh, simple points. In general, uh, data policy should be very uh, compact and very, very uh, short uh, document, which is easy to interpret for everybody. And uh, these four points say that uh, in general, SIOS uh, use open exchange of data policy. Uh, that data, metadata products are shared within SIOS uh, partners. Uh, and uh, 
also our data uh, should be available through SIOS data management system uh, with a minimum time, time delay at uh, minimum cost. Uh, normally, it is a contribution of SIOS partner to, to, to uh, SIOS. And all shared data and metadata uh, should be distributed free of charge uh, and uh, no more than cost of reproduction. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is no case in the past that that SIOS member asked uh, for uh, uh, some compensation for, for reproduction of, of data. And uh, about restrictions, uh, data uh, that could be restricted, but it's very there are very strict rules. So it's not so easy to restrict uh, data. Uh, we should provide very good reason why we are going to restrict uh, access to data. Uh, there are nine points uh, which also conform to Inspire Directive, and uh, uh, we can. Uh, in general, uh, restrict access to data if it could compromise the confidentiality of human subjects, uh, cause harm to endangered species or uh, other vulnerable subjects. And uh, also, uh, when data is confi confidential to uh, proceedings of uh, public authorities, uh, so we are not trying to compete with uh, politicians uh, and uh, also if there are uh, uh, international uh, affairs uh, issues uh, like international relations, uh, if there are courts of justice, if there are some other confidentialities of personal data, uh, maybe uh, some data come from uh, commercial uh, projects uh, so uh, this data also is not available for for uh, SIOS broadly but uh, we should uh, uh, negotiate with commercial organizations to release data uh, as frequent as possible uh, and of course point number nine please uh, take a glance materials in the course of completion so if project is ongoing and there is no publication yet, uh, this data could be restricted upon the time of uh, publication of, of uh, project results. But of course, you should consider to, to publish uh, this data uh, earlier and release data for other purposes. Uh, so generic data management plan should consist uh, of uh, information, what types of data, samples, physical collections, software, curriculum materials, other materials uh, will be collected. Uh, so not only data created, but, uh, but also data discovered somewhere else. And uh, uh, how it will be processed uh, in the course of project. Uh, generic DMP should uh, also provide information about standards, uh, about standards for uh, metadata, uh, metadata formats, uh, about content. Uh, of co also, uh, generic DMP should describe plans and protocols uh, for uh, access uh, and reuse for data. Uh, and uh, also, DMP should uh, provide information about uh, plans for data archiving, uh, about storing of samples, uh, other uh, research products. So you, you see, it's not only uh, some virtual number management, also very uh, hardware uh, activities like uh, storage of samples and where, where data and samples will be stored, how to access this uh, data and samples, and uh, last but not least, uh, what cost or what resources are required to implement this data management plan. So what kind of infrastructure we need, how, uh, uh, what will be the cost of, of uh, data uh, maintenance uh, in coming years, etc. So what is the best data management plan? Because the uh, title of presentation is uh, how to prepare good data management plan. Uh, the best data management plan is like a unicorn. It cannot exist because of 
variability of domains. Uh, some researchers are uh, performing activities in so social science sciences. So we they should put special attention when they uh, develop data management plan for GDPR and how to uh, anonymize data, etc. Uh, environmental researchers have no such problem because uh, this data is not following uh, or is not in the scope of interest of G GDPR. Uh, there are very different goals of the projects. Uh, uh, there is uh, very strong variability of acquisition methods. Uh, uh, variability of volumes. If we consider some biological or chemical sampling, when uh, after long-term analysis in laboratory we got uh, just one number, versus uh, multi-beam side scan sonar or satellite imaginary, when in second they produce uh, hundreds of gigabytes of data, it's obvious that we have to present different approach when we develop data management plan. We have also a uh, spatial and temporal resolution uh, variable from project to project. Uh, also different requirements for, for data and data archiving. Uh, so uh, good data management plan should reflect all these issues and, and uh, should be adjusted to these requirements uh, very strongly connected with, uh, with uh, 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 with the uh, form of the project. Uh, also, good data management plan should provide formal record of plan planet activities, uh, should uh, precise collaboration of uh, parties involved in projects, including uh, third parties, citizen science, etc. Uh, should describe standards, should uh, provide mechanisms for funding bodies to make assessment of progress of, of the project and and, conform and uh, conformity to data policies. So, uh, what are the problems uh, of data management uh, plan? Uh, just a few examples uh, from the previous week even. So, uh, there are or original quotations from, from, uh, from the data management plans I have seen last time. Uh, data will be available for scientists upon request. So, why it is restricted and uh, maybe someone say that that uh, only scientists can understand data doesn't matter but it's ridiculous uh, but uh, who will handle requests for access if data is, is uh, uh, restricted so where data will be stored and who will handle requests for access now and in the future and uh, another quotation, project will use standards, format and mechanisms to ensure long-term data availability. So what are these formats? Uh, if you provide such information, provide this information attached with list of data files uh, produced by project and how they will be stored, what are the formats, etc. How to proceed uh, this data the, and these data files. And very often I observe that people are not confident uh, or they are confident about standards, but in fact they are not standards, they are just uh, some uh, very uh, hermetic information used only by them. Uh, another quotation, information on metadata, full metadata provided and searchable in many EU data integrators. So no comments. And uh, last week I got uh, from one of my colleagues uh, he was very happy and say, this is my data. So you can have example of, of table. I have no idea uh, what, where data and when has been collected uh, and uh, what are these numbers and uh, is it accuracy of method, accuracy of, of uh, something device, no more information attached and, and this data is useless. Uh, how to uh, proceed with the uh, data management plan? There are a lot of tools and there are a lot of uh, templates. Uh, please find it, them all uh, at address given in the presentation. Uh, I just uh, want to highlight two of them. It's Arctic Data Center uh, is providing template for data management plans. Uh, and uh, my favorite one is uh, Digital Curation Center, which is very 
uh, straightforward, but uh, quite complex, uh, very informative. And uh, usually when, we, when you use a template from Digital Creation Center, uh, you will produce a good data management plan. Of course, SIOS provide also tools for uh, scientists to store data, to organize data, to uh, handle data, to, 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 to uh, enhance data with meta information. Uh, when you use them and you store data at SIOS, definitely uh, your data will be visible. So it's very huge advantage of SIOS for, for SIOS partners uh, to uh, work with data uh, using uh, this tool and this mechanism. Uh, example of, of metadata structure you can find on the slide. And to conclude, uh, some short questions and answers. Do I need to develop data management plan for my project? Because people say it's just a small project. I have to, to work uh, one season or two and, and I will organize my data with Excel file. That's all. Uh, yes, it's not only for, uh, let's say, I have to prepare this junk, otherwise my proposal will be rejected. It's very often I, 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 I uh, am facing this attitude of my colleagues, scientists, which ask me to help them to develop some kind of data management plan. And uh, in my opinion, any plan is better than no plan, uh, because if, if we have plan, uh, we can measure if we are going we, ac along this plan and uh, we can measure progress, we can optimize our activities uh, and uh, we are also enabled to promote results of our project. So do I have to hire an expert to develop my data management plan? No, because you are your, uh, your expert. Martin? Yes. Could you wrap up within a minute? Yes, I think uh, it's just a half of slide and that's Good. all. <laughs> uh, no, you are experts of your data and uh, if you have templates, uh, you can uh, develop very good uh, data management plan. You can just can challenge this da data management plan against someone else and ask him if he understood this data management plan well. And do I have to be careful if develop my data management plan because when it is published once, I have to stick to this plan? No, or not really. Uh, because data management plan is something which is living document. It has to be managed. Uh, it has to be revised and updated as frequent as needed. Of course, it depends on policy of, of budget funder because when it is part of application, when we are trying to change this, we have to ask uh, or discuss this with a budget founder. But normally it should be uh, something obvious that data management plan is developing uh, during life cycle of project and then uh, the project uh, sustainability uh, period. Thank you.